As the months gave way to weeks and then to days, all thoughts and hearts were centered on that palace from whence a golden coach would soon set out upon a journey. A journey gay and live with color, yet fraught in all its inner meaning with a solemn wonder. Soon we knew within these walls, with orb and scepter, sword and crown, her name would be forever woven in the texture of our history, and it would be proclaimed for all to hear that Elizabeth was our undoubted queen. We knew that in her capital all stood ready, that shortly now the streets of London would reflect the cries of loyal millions, and such is the nature of our heritage that we are free to speculate upon our kings and queens, to look upwards at the symbol, yet deeply through the pageantry to the human heart within. The coronation and the derby, all in one week. The people's race, they always call it, and believe me, we were there. For this was a special one. Uh, that's for parking them, not selling them. Still, what's ten bob in a day like this? A half a million people was the estimate, all determined to make their fortunes. And that was the safest thing to have a monkey on. An unusual derby because everybody's heart was split, even the bookies. And that takes a bit of finding. Would it be Oriole, the Queen's horse, or Pinzer, with Gordon, champion jockey who never won a derby? Not an easy choice for any sportsman who calls himself a patriot. But whoever won, whoever lost, this was in every way a real royal derby. The Queen was with us and everybody wanted to see her. She's always sure of a wonderful welcome, of course, but this was special. All our minds, I suppose, were filled with crowded memories of only four days before when we'd seen her looking like someone in a coloured storybook. And now here she was amongst us all, just to show that the sport of kings was fit for a queen. So, with everybody set and a night to be riding, what more could one ask for? Well, maybe just the name of the winner. <laughs> if Gordon had been riding Oriole, I think we'd have shot the rest just to make sure. As it was, most of us had a secret hope that one or the other would pull it off, even if we had back something else. Somewhere in that mob was your shirt. Awful thought, isn't it? Lovely names they had too. Empire Honey, Jaffa the Second, Star of the Forest, and of course never forgetting all the old and Pinzer. The crowd couldn't miss a minute of it, and on the last stretch it began to look like a victory for Gordon at long last. Yes, Pinzer it was. With Oreo moving up to second place, fate couldn't have arranged things much better. So if you hadn't backed either of them, it served you right. Well, Gordon hadn't cost the bookies anything in the derby before, so all they could do was pay up and look big. Seriously, everybody wished him joy of it, not least Her Majesty herself, who was soon to bestow upon him the proud title of Sir Gordon. A fine race won by a great jockey, 
and a welcome relaxation for the Queen and her husband from affairs of state. Edinburgh in its time has honoured many sovereigns since that distant day in the 7th century when it took its name from Edwin the Northumbrian King. Now the Scottish capital, and every Scotsman, was ready in its finery to receive another. Beneath the solemn walls of Edinburgh Castle, another ceremony was to be enacted. The royal command that the gates be opened, the keys duly presented. Only then, according to tradition, was she free to enter this place of many memories. But though the castle is the proud possession of the reigning sovereign, her place of residence is the palace of Holyrood House that home of many kings and queens of Scotland. The first battalion of the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders are on parade. With many of their number fresh from frontline service in Korea, this occasion has a deep significance. For now, they are to receive new colours from their Colonel-in-Chief, the Queen. Once more, the colours are dedicated to her service and watched by over 300 officers and men, two sons of the regiment receive them from her hand. These were a few more historic days for Scotland, whose pride takes many forms and which is never, on a fit occasion, loath to show it. Scotland had had the opportunity to show its loyalty, as London had. And London in those weeks had had many opportunities, not least on that historic visit to the Guild Hall. The sombre streets were gay with bunting as the ancient city received its queen within the boundaries. And while she lunched with Lord Mayor and Corporation, all was set for the journey back. For this was to be no ordinary journey. At Tower Pier, the royal barge, the Nore, was waiting to take her and her escort back to Westminster along that historic waterway, the Thames.